All right, everybody, welcome in. Special demonstration here for ME429. This is a composite manufacturing demonstration. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is um, sort of introduce all the equipment. I'm going to introduce all the equipment. It's sort of in this handout that I sort of provided. Then you can follow along with what I'm doing. So we've got our cameraman to come in here a little bit closer. I'll talk about what each one of these things are. So we have two aluminum plates here. These are each 12 inch by 12 inch. They'll be kind of like the foundation and the upper plate that we're going to use to sort of like compress all this sandwich together. We have a sharpie for kind of creating lines and measuring things appropriately. We have some very sharp scissors. Here this red looking mat is a non-porous release film. So here I have one that was kind of left, left over from before. You can kind of see how thin it is. It kind of looks like a saran wrap kind of thing. I don't really know. Um, so that's the non-porous release film that'll go on the aluminum. Here we have a porous nylon release ply. It's sort of this green, kind of has this like fabric kind of texture to it. So that's the nylon release ply. We have uh, sort of this angle ruler for sort of measuring our pieces and make sure, making sure that we're getting cuts at right angles. Here, this is a bleeder cloth, this white cloth here. Uh, it's kind of like very large paper towel, you get a general idea. This blue tape here, this is called flash tape. It's high temperature tape and one side is sticky, the other side is this very shiny um, kind of surface to it, and that is because this is a release side, so if you have any epoxy that's stuck on there, it will release from that tape. And uh, here, this is sort of the large roll of the bleeder cloth. So from here, uh, we'll cut, and we'll start actually cutting all of our stuff to dimension. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna cut is the non-porous release film. It's kind of this like red looking color and it comes kind of folded up in this uh, packaging. So I need two of these that are cut to 12 inch by 12 inch square. So I'm gonna do that now. Next thing I need is one 12 inch by 12 inch nylon release. That is this guy. And this is porous, so I'm gonna cut that now. Next, I need four layers of my breather cloth, which is here, and I need 12 inch by 12 inch for this thing. There we go, four layers of bleeder cloth. Last thing I need to do is cut my free break, and that's over here in this freezer. So here this guy's a little bit difficult to work with, but hopefully you can kind of see that um, this black strip of material here is the free break, all right? And it sort of runs in this longitudinal direction. So all the fibers are like running generally in this direction, and it's held in place between two release films, which is like this red and this blue film that I'm having problems, trouble separating right now. But there you go, it's between these two films. So I'm gonna cut this material with the films in place, and then right before I'm ready to lay down the pre-prank, I'll remove the films so that I can apply the material. So again, I'm gonna need to cut here four pieces that are 10 inch by 10 inch. little extra strip here. Save that for a rainy day. Four more just like that. Sorry, three more just like that. As I work with this pre-preg, it gets a little bit warmer. 
so it's more sticky. So time is kind of of the essence here. The longer it stays frozen, the easier it is to work with. All right, so those are my four layers of prepeg. We're now gonna sort of take all those materials and put them onto a aluminum plate and get things ready for manufacturing. All right, we got all our materials here and we're ready to start putting it all together into one nice little composite sandwich. So let's do that. Sort of on the edge of the table here on the back side, maybe you can't really see it from where he is now, but we'll have the cameraman move in. You'll see I've cut a bunch of these little pieces of flash tape, which I'm gonna use to help me secure some of the things down to the aluminum plate. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start applying our films and prepreg and such appropriately. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to apply my non-release film. This is the red thing that I just cut previously, 12 inch by 12 inch, and I'm going to put that right on top of the plate here. So it's going to be approximately the same dimensions as the plate, so I'm going to need to kind of like take the tape and wrap it around the edge to get it on there and secure it properly. So here I'll do my best to kind of just like get it on there and uh, wrap it around the edge. So I'll do a couple of the sides here. I'll do this side over here. And now we'll go into super speed while I do the rest. Next, we're gonna lay our prepreg down. It's over in the freezer right now. I'm gonna take one piece out at a time and I'm gonna arrange it in a 090-90 fashion. cameraman in here sort of take a look at what this actually looks like it's kind of the shiny surface you know the epoxy's already in there and pre-metered so we can tell that the fibers are sort of running this way these white bits that are here on the edge that's just kind of there to sort of help them stay aligned and keep them all together so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna flip this over try to get this down on the actual aluminum here as best I can as close to the center as I can right there on the film Might need an edge of the scissors to kind of get this up. And then just like a band-aid, right off. All right, three more just like that. So the last layer of the fibers were running this way. We want to do one now that's 90 degrees relative to that. So the fibers on this guy are kind of running this direction. So I actually want to place this roughly down in this general format. I'm going to do as best I can, sort of like align this right on top of the last. It's not going to be perfect. I'll do the best that I can do, but right about there should be approximately good. All right, so here we go. I'll need another edge. Second layer is a bit trickier than the first, but again, just like a band-aid.
All right, I need another 90 degree layer here so I keep a symmetric structure. Fiber is running in this way, so I want to rotate it 90 degrees and apply this way. Got a bit of a bad batch here, but it's okay. Let's still turn off for a nice demo piece. Once you get it down, there's no real going back. So you just gotta try to do your best the first time and get it down. There's no going back after that, after that lay down. Alright. So again, I need to find an edge. And band-aid. Last layer, be a zero degree layer. Grab an edge. Just like a band-aid. Alright, so we'll cut here for just a second while I clean some things up. Next thing we need to put down is our porous nylon release film. That's going to go over the top of here. When we provide compression and heat this up, Whatever extra epoxy that's inside the pre is going to move upwards through this mold, through this porous material, into our bleeder block. Lastly, our top aluminum plate with our film on top. So this is our kind of composite sandwich. We're going to take this now up to the foundry, put it in an oven with some weights on top of it to apply pressure. Okay, we're now in the foundry, uh, the second floor of the science building across from my office. What we're going to do is we're going to put that composite sandwich into the oven under pressure. 
So the only oven that's really big enough on this campus to do this is this one in the foundry, which is right over here. So I'll open the door here and you can see it. Have our cameraman come around. This is the oven that we're going to use. We're going to put the composite inside of there. Let it cook. So I've kind of got it on the rollers over here. Here we are is our composite plate that we made. And into the oven it goes. Last thing I need to do is I need to put some weight on top of our sandwich to pro provide some compression. We're going to do that with four large bars of steel that each weigh about 60 pounds. Rawr! <laughs> so we'll get those in and get those on. Lift with the legs, baby! With the steel laying on top of the plate, that's going to provide us a pretty good amount of weight during the production. Many hours later. All right, two hours later, I'm going to take the composite now out of the oven. Here I am near the oven. I'm just going to shut it off and I'm going to let it cool inside the oven. So here I come over to the door. Here's the door for the oven. I'm just going to open this so that this guy can cool. So here we are, you see it inside there still, and I'm just gonna let this cool for maybe about an hour or two and come back. Okay, so we've made the composite, everything's now cool, and I'm gonna just take this bad boy off. Right, so maybe we'll bring it over to the rollers over here. So we'll unmask here. There we go, here's our film, still good. Here's our bleeder cloths, still mostly dry. A little bit of resin coming through here, so we see a little bit of the amber color. That's some of the epoxy that's coming through. So as I'm removing some of these breather layers, you'll start to see more and more epoxy kind of come through. So we see here some more epoxy coming through, and it's getting to a point where I can't really take off any more of the breather cloths. So I'm just gonna release the fuel ply here. I'll try to grab the composite, and there we go. So here's our resulting composite. Oh, not the best quality, it did buckle a little bit inside there, but that's okay, sometimes that happens. Um, here's the nylon release film. I'm gonna release this from the composite itself. So we see a lot of the extra resin that was kind of pushed up from the pressure during the process. And here we go, here's our final product. This is a four layer 09090 laminate, very thin, um, might be good for like a skin for an aircraft, something like that, um, final product. So I'll bring this to class some of the days and we can kind of take a look. Okay, I'm now in my office after the composite has been manufactured and I want to talk just at the very end here about a couple of things that are going on with this composite and some interesting phenomena that have occurred. So here is the panel that we made. I kind of have it in my hands now. I want to show off some of those ridges here on the surface that kind of came onto the surface after the manufacturing process. So we see all these like little ridges here and I want to talk about why those occur. It's not because those ridges were there like on the film or you know anything that happened to be in the release. It's there for a different reason. And I want to talk about why that's happening. I'm going to flip to the writing pad quick and let's talk about what's actually going on there. So here we are now with the writing pad. And the phenomena that we see here is a phenomena of buckling. Okay, so. Let's talk about this. Generally, we understand here that we have a thin lamina. Specifically, it's a thin laminate, many stacks of uh, individual layers. And I haven't measured this, but I'm guessing it's probably in the vicinity of like 0.5 millimeters thick. 
Okay, so even though we have four layers of prepreg in this particular composite, it's it's very thin, about 0 0.5 millimeters in thickness. When we manufacture this guy, we're manufacturing it at at high temperatures. So we manufacture at about 310 degrees Fahrenheit. And we put on top of that sandwich structure four steel bars that were each 60 pounds. So we had about 240 pounds of force in this process. So what's actually happening in this manufacturing process? Well, when this thing um, is raised in temperature, we have the liquid epoxy um, that's sort of in there. We're raising the temperature. What happens is this piece will solidify at high temperatures. Okay, so we've got this thin laminate here. That's solidified at high temperature. So the environment here is T equals 310 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, as this particular material cools down after we turn off the oven and cool it down, because of the way that coefficients of thermal expansion work is this thing wants to shrink. So at T equals room temperature, this thing is going to want to shrink on itself. So what happens is this thing starts to shrink on itself. And because this is so thin, what happens is we see these micro buckles that occur on the surface. Okay, so again, with this particular laminate that I had here, when we go down to this temperature equals room temperature, we get micro buckling. Okay, and so that manifests as like these little waves that you see sort of on the surface so that it can sort of like relieve this compressive stress that is made from, you know, the cooling process in manufacturing. All right, so we have this like microbuckling effect. The way that we would normally stop that normally, this is stopped with high pressure on the laminate. Okay, so pressure greater than, I don't know, let's say 15 PSI is probably appropriate. So what do I mean by that? Okay, so if I wanted to stop this sort of shrinking phenomena from happening, I can apply a ton of pressure on this laminate to stop it from shrinking. So here, if I put a bunch of pressure on this laminate, like you see I'm kind of drawing here, that would stop this buckling from occurring. You're putting so much pressure on there that you're not allowing this thing to sort of like shrink in on itself and buckle on itself, okay? So for this to happen, we need pressures that are greater than approximately 15 PSI. Let's calculate how much pressure we actually had on our laminate. So here we have a 10 inch by 10 inch laminate. and we applied a force which was 240 pounds. So the pressure that we had in this particular laminate is just the force divided by the area. That's 240 pounds divided by the area here, if it's 10 inch by 10 inch, that's 100 inches squared. So the pressure that we applied here was only 2.4 PSI. Even though I was using those massive steel bars that each weighed about 60 pounds, even putting four of those steel bars on this 10 inch by 10 inch laminate, we're still only applying 2.4 PSI of pressure. Okay, so the pressure that is sort of like pushing down on this laminate during the processing in this situation just wasn't sufficient to stop this like micro buckling from happening on the surface. And so because of that, I'll kind of come back to my main camera here. Because of that, we see all these little micro buckles that occur because this thing is kind of like trying to compress on itself as it's cooling because it's manufactured at high temperature and as it cools it's trying to shrink down on itself 
and all these little ridges, these micro buckles occur that allow it to sort of leave that loads on the end that might cause it to buckle. So that'll do it for my little composite manufacturing demonstration. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you do enjoy it, make sure to like look at the advanced composite selectives that are offered because we do a lot more stuff like this in those classes. Okay, so long for now.